Hi folks, Canadian Prepper here. So I want to give you a little insider tip on where you can bug out to. Now in 99% of situations, the best place you're going to be able to bug out to is going to be a hotel in another city, province or state where a disaster is not happening. Chances are you're going to be dealing with a localized disaster. But of course, as we know, there are those global threats as well that we all have to stay ready for. Now the problem with a lot of people's bug out strategy thinking and you know I thought like this for a long time as well before I really understood the reality of the situation is that if you're planning to just bug out willy-nilly into a rural environment you're going to be faced by the locals there who probably know that region like the back of their hand and anywhere there is roads there's people there's this idea that you're gonna find a road which nobody else has driven on for a long period of time and indeed you may and i'm going to talk about some places today where you're going to find those kind of roads but in 90 percent of situations most of the roads especially the ones that are maintained they're maintained for a reason it's because people are either working there or they're living there and you may think that because of the low population density of these regions that there's no way that people could know every neck of the woods? Well, you'd be wrong, because unlike the city, there's not a lot to do to keep you occupied, so a lot of people get to know their surroundings quite well. In addition to this, if you're planning on doing any sort of hunter-gathering, or even just living, even just having a fire, is gonna be sending off smoke signals hundreds of meters away, and at nighttime having a fire in those conditions, well, maybe not so much in a forested, uh, region where you're going to have a lot of concealment but if you're around a lake or something like that that fire can be seen across a lake for miles and miles if you're hunting with a firearm that gunshot's going to be heard for miles and miles and even someone with the most rudimentary tracking skills is going to be able to tell if a place has been inhabited recently this is most evident with roads. Now getting to the issue of accessibility because the thing with the Canadian boreal forest is that there's a lot of it. There's millions of hectares of Canadian boreal forest out there which has never been touched by man. The problem is in order to get there, there's no roads to get there. So basically you're left to your own devices to try to bushwhack and trailblaze a path to these very remote regions which are far far away from civilization if that's what you plan on doing and i'm not saying that that's necessarily what you should do in most situations but if you had to it is a possibility however you're going to be faced with that major challenge in the fact that there's probably not going to be roads to get there now the most accessible places that not a lot of people are going to think about are going to be logging roads I'm sure there's a lot of logging that goes on in the US as well, so this most certainly will be pertinent there. It's very easy to identify logged forest on Google Earth. A simple way to do it is just Google pulp and paper mill or wood processing plant in your area and that'll pull up a mill perhaps that's in your area and usually within a few hundred mile radius of that mill there's going to be a lot of logging going on now a lot of these roads they're pretty gnarly so you're going to need a 4x4 to get through them but the thing with these regions is, is once they go in and they cut the forest down uh, they come back and they do some routine maintenance because in Canada you legally have to replant all of the trees that you cut down so after they've done that after they've replanted the trees they come and do some maintenance every few years in terms of spraying to ensure that the trees grow but aside from that these regions are very remote they're not recreational areas they're usually around places that people don't really want to go but the thing is they're close to a lot of lakes that not a lot of the public really know about only the hunters and probably the really in the know locals are utilizing these places to go and hunt and forage and a lot of these places are on resource crown land so indeed these companies own the rights to this crown land so obviously you're going to be faced with some legal issues if you're squatting there for longer than 35 days i think it is i can't remember what the exact amount of time you're allowed to squat on crown land is for but if it's leased then you're going to run into some trespassing issues but if it's not posted 
as no trespassing, then there's nothing to stop you from going in there and just loitering a little bit and uh, scoping the area out. And obviously in a bug out situation, if you had a wilderness skills and you had a significant sized group of people who could together eke out a living in this harsh environment, then indeed you can go to these clear cuts. Uh, the good thing about the clear cuts is that they're vast. They're in every province. But the great thing about the cuts is that the moose and the deer like them because there's a lot of smaller vegetation for them to munch on and there's not a lot of obstacles in their way so they can walk freely without having to trudge through the bush. The bugs are probably going to be a little bit more manageable in certain places. It's going to be a little bit breezier but they're also quite dry so you don't want to be just having fires here willy-nilly. A lot of the moisture that was held in the ground by the root systems after all that biomass has been removed by the loggers, they take off all these trees. Uh, there's nothing to hold the moisture into the soil, so those places tend to get quite arid and dry, and it takes several years for them to replenish themselves and get back to their ecological homeostasis. Normally the roads are going to be manageable by a 4x4, but like I said, if you come across a block which hasn't been dealt with maybe in 10, 15, 20 years, uh, one thing you're going to find is that it's a very nice forest because all the trees are the same distance apart because they've all been planted by human beings. So it's going to be an easier forest for you to navigate because by and large they've went in there and they sprayed every few years. So there's not going to be a lot of that underlying brush that you have to bushwhack through. It's going to be prime camping grounds because of the lack of obstacles. But the roads are going to get progressively worse and worse and more overgrown and that's a really good way to gauge how long a road hasn't been tended to by by how overgrown it is if you can barely see any gravel on the road and it's mostly grass chances are that road hasn't been driven over in over a decade but you can usually also tell by how tall the trees are. Usually if the trees are taller than you, chances are they're not coming in there to do a whole lot anymore. Unless they're still utilizing those logging roads to get to cut blocks that are beyond that area, which in some cases is the case. Oftentimes they will deactivate these roads and what they do to deactivate them is they just dig really big ditches on the road with a backhoe so the only way you could actually drive them with a vehicle is if you somehow bridge those deactivated parts, which is not hard to do because we did it in tree planting all the time. What I'm saying is if you want to find a remote location, you're not gonna find it in national parks. You're not gonna find it in provincial parks, regional parks, any sort of public roadside attraction type place. You're not gonna find it there. You have to really think off-grid, off-grid, and the problem with off-grid, off-grid is that there's no way to get there. So the closest thing you're gonna get to being truly off the map is through these logging roads. So knowing this then is gonna allow you to have a lot more access to these lakes because there's thousands of lakes in Canada which are just chock full of fish, but nobody can get to them because they're in the most remote of regions and there's absolutely no roads to get there. Maybe there's the odd quad trail here and there, the odd hiking trail, but in order to actually get a vehicle in there, it's impossible. Usually you have to get there by seaplane or something like that. You can just go on Google Earth or look at any map and these places are pretty easy to find. I would suggest just using the satellite version of Google Maps and that's gonna tell you a whole lot of what some of the bug out location options are in your region. So some people might say that I'm a little naive to give this some information away, but the reality is there are so many cut blocks in Canada. The, the forest is so vast, people don't really understand it. I don't even understand the scope of it yet. And I've lived here all my life. But the thing that you need to realize is there's very few roads that permeate the Canadian wilderness and basically the human presence is only apparent within 50 meters of that road and in either directions it's just thousands of miles of unbroken wilderness but it's getting there that is the hard part crown land 
is probably your best bet. I, I don't know the exact statistics, but I think something like 80, 90% of land in Canada is crown land, meaning that it's basically open to the public for recreational use. You can shoot on it, you can hunt on it, you can basically do whatever you want on it. You could build a freaking log house on it if you want, but uh, actually don't quote me on that last one. I don't think you can build permanent structures legally but like I'm saying, <laughs> that there's so many places, they would never ever be able to find you if you really wanted to get lost in the wilderness. But you're going to have to work to get there and be prepared to deal with the bugs. Be prepared to deal with the lack of resources unless you find a very well stocked lake. Well, naturally stocked, of course, because if it's stocked, then that means man has been there. And you're also going to want to be aware of all of the predators that are out there bull moose in running season you have your black bears your grizzly bears your wolverines your wolves your coyotes and all the other little scavengers like raccoons and ravens and all these things that will just steal your food when your back's turned and they're very smart about it they're not stupid animals i've had ravens you know they can they know when you're looking at them and they'll swoop in and steal your sandwich right when your back is turned. They're really clever, dirty little buggers. But I encourage you if you have a, a few days off in a row, or even just have the day off and you live in one of these wooded areas or a couple of hours from one, just go and take a drive through one of these cut blocks and mosey around. But don't forget to bring some bear spray and bring some form of personal protective equipment. So let me know what you guys think in the comments. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. And oh yeah, I've, for my American friends, let me know what uh, your logging situation is down there if uh, what i've said here is reminiscent of what the laws are there and uh, whether or not you have an equivalent to crown land or if there's some sort of public lands i don't know how much there would be because the united states is far more habitable most of it than uh, the, than canada so i would imagine that it, it's going to be a lot slimmer pickings down there but you're not going to be faced with the same hazards, including the cold weather up here, which is going to be the number one killer. Anyways, let's wrap this video up. Thanks for watching Canadian Prep Pro.